Talk about it, Joel. The, the week and what it's been like for you and your your players. Uh, just very humbled, you know, grateful to be here. Thank you, Harold and Stevie. I mean, you're the whole. Um, everybody's been so hospitable to us and hospitable. I mean, just um, thankful for all they've done for us. The people at the hotel, grateful for. We had an escort to come here. I'm like, I don't know if we really need an escort to drive here. It's two minutes away, but it was nice to have. But just people are so nice here, and it's been a great experience for our team. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any opening uh, comment you want to make? Uh yeah, well, you know, good morning. We're grateful to be here. Um, really excited again. Thankful, Harold, for you and your staff. You guys have been great. Uh, a lot of activities for our, our guys, and I know our, our team's enjoyed it. We're grateful to be here. Got to uh, talk with Coach Kleiman last night, and, you know, I've known him. We've um, served on the AFCA board, you know, together, and so uh, I knew him before he became the head coach. At Kansas State is not only a really, really good football coach, but he's a great man, just down to earth. He and his wife got to meet his family last night. Um, we're grateful to be here, but I didn't want to play Kansas State because I've, I've seen them play this year and know what kind of team they have, and I know they'll be well prepared. They'll be tough, hard nosed, but we're excited to be here. Our team's excited, play against a really good football team. Being a very prestigious bowl, it's a great honor for our team. Questions? I think one thing, it's not like we're a team, you know, we had a bad year last year, but we've won a lot of games. So it wasn't like we're a team that's, you know, a perennial loser. We've been to a ton of bowl games. We've won a lot of games here. Uh, but we were off last year, and I just, um, some of the things that I knew we were off on were just things that we could fix, some things that we had to fix in the locker room, some things we had to, uh, some tough decisions had to make on our staff, which is really hard. I've been, you know, at the Naval Academy, 22 years. Some of the guys I've worked with for decades, you know, so you know their families. That, those are hard decisions. Those are the realities, you know, of this profession. But um, last year this time, uh, I, I think I was in San Diego going to my son's bowl game. They played Northwestern. He plays at Utah. And as much as I love my son, I didn't like being at his bowl game. I'd rather be at our own. So. Um, a lot of reflection on what we need to do it started with me. Um, the biggest thing we did was just made a commitment to Malcolm. As I reflected back, the first thing I did just looked at what I could do better, and um, I shouldn't I shouldn't have benched him. I, sh I shouldn't have moved him, you know, to another position. We we jumped the gun, um, panicked a little bit after the Air Force game, uh, but just looking back at it, just did we do all we could to give him a chance? And I don't think we did. I don't think we did a good job. So that was on me as a coach to kind of look at what we were doing schematically. Because I knew this guy was special. His first game he ever started, he rushed for 275 yards. I mean, there are guys, that, there are thousands of players that play this game that don't, don't rush for 100 yards. He rushed for 275 yards his first game. And so if I was a little bit smarter, I would, that would have been a, <laughs> something to realize, don't move this guy. Uh, but once we did that, we made some changes. Uh, I, it, our senior leadership was truly committed not to let that ever happen again. And they've been true to the word. It's, it's been the players. It's been our new coaches coming uh, that have gotten us to this point. No doubt. I mean, they're just, to me, it could be similar to the Army game. You know, they're, you know, they possess the ball. They, you know, really good at what they do. Um, Coach Kleiman knows how to win, win games. You know, they're sound. They run the football. Obviously, they can throw it too. They're pretty multiple in what they do. Really good on special teams. Really good on defense. Um, so you got to make sure. Sometimes you play games with high possession teams. Um, you know, they're in the Big 12, so they play a lot of teams that are up, up try to go up tempo. Uh, but we're going to possess the ball like them. And when you play games like that, you got to be really selective in your play calling. 
Uh, sometimes when you play up tempo teams that you know you get a ton of possessions, you kind of you can kind of probe a little bit and kind of test the waters and see different things. But coming to these games, you got to be super detailed in what you're doing. Your your game planning has got to be on point, and you got to know how you're going to attack people real quickly. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what they're going to do on defense from a, you know offensive standpoint. You know, we've looked at some of the history of of coach going against option teams. But, you know, people got, you know, 15 practices they can change up. But we got to see what they're doing really quickly and try to adjust because it's going to be a short game. I mean, that's always our mantra. You know, just got to take care of the football. Uh, we can't give up any big plays in special teams. And that's going to be hard against them because they're super explosive. Um, and so th that's always a key. Maximize your possessions. Take care of the football. Don't give up any big plays. And if anything, they get make them earn it. Coach, you talked about uh, adjusting to maybe throwing the football a little bit more this year than, than it has in the past. Talk about how that has really uh, entered into your your game plan this year and, and how you put that goal against the pitching. Well, we knew that you know we're obviously an option team. We run the football, and so we know people would you know crowd the line of scrimmage and. You know, normally in option teams, we'll try to do different things by formation or try to crack block different people or block back on certain people. But eventually, you run out of hats. Eventually, you run out of people. And so when they're all up on the line of scrimmage, you got to back people up. So our philosophy is really simple. If you're up on the line of scrimmage, you're going to throw it over your head. And we know with Malcolm, people are normally close to the line of scrimmage because they're trying to stop him. So we knew we had to implement some, some different pass games and some different things to keep people honest. Um, we've utilized way different formations to try to spread people out a little bit more. Where we before we'd have you know a lot more condensed, uh, packed in formations, which we still have in our in our arsenal. But we've tried to spread people out horizontally and vertically with the pass game uh, to try to open up lanes for Malcolm. It's all been predicated on Malcolm. We were just trying to do what can we do to maximize his skill set, and first of all, try to spread people out, and second of all, try to stretch the field. Horizontally, if you know if people are, uh, or vertically, excuse me, if people are coming out. John, we can see what Malcolm does on the field, but what is what is he like in the locker room in the coach's office? In the what's, his, what's his character like as a person? You know, we're at a school of, uh, of leadership. And there's, I think there's a lot of different forms of leadership. And I think the thing about his leadership style, which you know I love, there's the servant leader and the humble leader. And Malcolm's leadership is all by example. I mean, he's a guy that comes when he comes. I'll uh, give an example. So we eat uh, by class. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of a tradition we do. It just kind of, uh, when we have our team meals, uh, you know, I let the seniors eat first. and. And then we kind of go down all the way down to freshmen. It just I don't know why we do it. It's just kind of show respect for your your elders. Um, Malcolm always goes last. He always eats last. Nobody's ever told him to do that. He just kind of does it on his own. But to me, those are signs. I guarantee you, that's not um, that doesn't go unnoticed by his teammates. That here's the you know one of the best football players to ever put on a uniform, a navy uniform, but. He's not in the front of the line, you know, get out of my way. I'm the, you know, I'm the star. I'm going to eat first, you know. You know, one of those guys that, you know, yells at the server, hey, the chicken is cold or whatever. He's just, just a humble kid. But those are the kind of things I think kind of illustrates who he is. Um, I think there is a, a, a caption, I think, in the Army-Navy game that really illustrates him. So at the end of the game, you know, they show some of our guys that, you know, jumped up on the barrier, were sitting in the crowd. And, and celebrating with other midshipmen, you know, singing our alma mater. But he was in the back. I mean, he was in the back, back, amongst the crowd. But that's him. You know, here's a guy just rushed for 300 yards, and he wasn't in the front sitting on the stage. You know, he was on the back. You know, so that's Malcolm, just a humble, uh, good person, raised by, you know, wonderful people. You know, being, being a dad, you recognize that when you see kids like that, that they've been taught well, you know, and he's, he's got wonderful parents that have taught him well. So, uh, 
Gene Taylor, K State's athletic director, talked about his relationship with you leading up to the game. Just how, how far does that go back, and how much of a chance have you had to, to reconnect with them? Well, I actually saw him last night at the basketball game. You know, saw him earlier on. Um, but you know, I've known Gene, Gene when he first came to the Naval Academy in '95. He was an associate uh, athletic director, or assistant, but he was he was there. And the thing that I remembered about Gene being here, just a good person, and it seemed like he did everything. I mean, he seemed like he was involved in so many things, but just just a hard worker, good person. Um, anybody that knows Gene, nobody has a bad word to say about him. Just a good person, good family man. You know, know his family. Um, you know, his daughter knows my sons. You know, I did kind of grew up together, and so. Um, just a good man, good man, and you know, really happy for all the success that he's had at all the different places he's been. But it doesn't surprise me the success he's had because he's. I think everybody who's been around him knew that he was really, really good at what he did. Yeah, his teams look like him. You know, they're well coached, physical, um, just a really good football team. And I think what he's done has been remarkable. To come into a place that was coached by a, an icon, you know, what I mean, a, a legend in our profession, you know, Coach Snyder. To follow that, that's hard. That's a really hard thing to do to to follow, you know, a, a coaching legend like that. Uh, but he's come, um, you know. I haven't been at any of his meetings or whatever, but you can tell that the kids have embraced his system. You can tell that he's embraced some of the other maybe things that have happened. But the transition to me seems like it went really well. And like I said, I've never stepped foot on their campus. This is just me watching them from afar, you know, watching their, their teams play, watching what they've done. Um, I mean, the teams they've beaten, beating some really good teams, obviously Oklahoma. But that, to me, is just is a great testament to what type of coach he was. I mean, a very successful coach, obviously, where he's at, to come and to follow a legend like Coach Snyder and to implement his system, the way he does things. You know there is some give and take because some guys come and they just, you know, knock down the walls and say, hey, this is how we're doing things. Uh, it could be a little bit abrasive. But it's, to me, it's apparent that um, the transition has gone really well. So. To me, Ava, that's really impressive for me because those are those are hard things to do. I don't think people recognize how hard that is. They just think that if you're a successful coach, you come here and you're successful. But I think there's a lot of examples of successful coaches to go to other places and you don't succeed. So it's a great testament to him. Well, there's a lot of obviously been playing football a long time, and for him to be the leading rusher of all time would obviously be a be a great you know accomplishment for him, for the offensive line, uh, for our program, and be a great testament. Um, he if he rushes for a lot of yards, it should bode well for us. If he doesn't rush for a lot of yards, it won't bode well for us. So, you know, on the, on the immediate standpoint, um, if he rushes for a lot of yards, it's normally good on our part. But just um, I think eventually we'll sit back and reflect on, you know, what he's done. But I think a lot of it is just his personality. He's so unassuming that I think some of the stuff that, you know, you, we expect him to make four guys miss on every play. And if... If he only makes two guys miss, he goes, oh, come on, what happened? You got to make that other guy miss. But the standard has been so high for him um, that if he, you know, all of these accomplishments that he's doing, I mean, with that you see, you know, that our, you know, Scott, our SID sends things out, and it's just amazing to me all the things that he's done here. But a lot of it has been just, just who he is. And I thought about coming into the season that here's a guy that, you know, as a back-to-back thousand-yard -back rusher, and he was, you know, fighting to be the, the the legitimate starting quarterback, and he was trying to gain everybody's confidence. And I watched him in spring ball, I watched him in, in camp, the way he 
finish plays. I mean, he he seemed like a rookie on an NFL team trying to make the team. He was the hardest working guy. You run, you practice harder than you know anybody on the team. And I just felt like, man, this kid is humility. I mean, there, there's not too many thousand yard rushers playing the season, much less back to back thousand yard rushers. And here he is on our team, you know, acting like he was a walk on or something, even though we don't have walk ons. But uh, he's just, his humility um, kind of masks, I guess, it's kind of a long answer, some of his accomplishments, because he doesn't toot his own horn or doesn't bask in that. He just wants to win. And, Super impressive about him. Coach, any thoughts on quarterback Skyler Thomas? Really impressed with him. I think the first thing I think is just decision making. You know, just um, been impressed with the way he's you know handled that. Uh, but I hate to see dual guys. They're really good throwers, good runners, and they got a system that you know lends to it. And so they, I think they've. Ex- Done, done a great job of using his skill set, not just from a physical dual threat, but I think he makes great decisions. And that's the first thing I look at at quarterback, just decision making. Because that, to me, is always the preeminent factor in a, in a really good quarterback decision making, and he's doing a really good job with that. Uh, it's been awesome. You know, it's just... Um, we're the, we're the two old guys on the staff, which is kind of crazy. We, we started together. We, you know, played high school ball together and uh, went to college together. Uh, I knew him when he started to date his wife. I mean, I just, I mean, I, just all these things. I mean, we were really close, and to be back together has been really, really awesome for me because we knew we always wanted to get together. You know, we'd go to conventions and say, hey, eventually we'd like to get back together when we were assistants. You know, we talk about, hey, if you become head coach, hire me. Make sure you hire me. If I become a head coach, I'll hire you. And, you know, our families are really close. But it's been awesome for me to see his, who he is. Um, and I don't want to say uh, this coach's name because I don't want to. But when he came back, you know, I was talking about a certain coach that's one of the, the gurus in, in college football coaching defensive coordinators. And, you know, I was like, hey, you know, if we – I'd love to go visit this guy, visit this school. You know, he's one of the best, you know, coaches around. He goes, and like, where this person is. Because, yeah, I know him. He used to be one of my GAs. You know, I forget that we're best friends, but we've been, we were gone for 20 years. You know, we were separated. And so he'd been at Penn State, been at Baylor, Texas Tech, um, Tulsa, obviously Kansas State. So he's worked with some of the best football coaches that have ever coached. But I still see him as my friend that, you know, we, you know, we play one on one, you know, pick up basketball together and I get mad at him. But this guy is a really, really good football coach, but he's a great person. He, he's definitely a head football coach. I don't know why people haven't hired him, but he's as good a football coach, as good a person as I've ever been around with. Take away the relationship part that I have with him in my 30 years of coaching. Well, the things that I remember about Gene is just he was a good person. You know, what I mean, he was not, he was a he was an associate AD. Uh, I don't know if, it, if that was right, assistant, but he was you know. But you could always talk to him. You know, what I mean, he wasn't a guy that if you ran into him. You know, he was an administrator, like, hey, don't talk to me, you know, just keeps walking. Just, he was just a good person, you know, just could always talk to him. Um, seemed always down to earth. He was a hard worker, things that I remember about him. Just, um, I think when he left, I mean, it just, we probably had to hire three other ADs to fill his spot. I mean, he just, he did a lot of different things. And, and those are the things that I remember about him, just down to earth, humble, hard worker, just normal. He just seemed like a normal guy to me. Coach, can you just talk about what it would mean to your program as a whole to win a prestigious bowl of this nature, beating a Big 12 and a Power 5 conference school? I mean, obviously that's a pretty impressive trophy. You look good in your, your lobby of your tip football office. Um, can you just talk about what it might mean to, if you could win this bowl? Yeah, first of all, you're right. That's a really sweet you know, trophy. 
um, but it, it means a lot to us. I mean, this is to be here at the Liberty Bowl, to be invited, we're super excited for us. Um, you know, to play a Big 12 team, a really good Big 12 team is a great honor. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't too fired up to hear as Kansas State because I knew who they were and what type of team they would be. But, you know, for us to have a chance to win this game would mean a lot for our program. It would help catapult us into the new year. But I think, you know, more than anything, it would hopefully, you know, finish off uh, a great season for us that we've had here in 2019. Can I piggyback on that a little bit? In fact, you know, the familiarity you've had playing here in Memphis as part of the American and also uh, going against a, a power five team. You talked to you guys about repping, uh, a repping the conference and, uh, against uh, a, a team in the league like uh, yeah, we're always trying to do that. We're always trying to fight for our conference, fight for our program. But, um, you know, we, we feel like we have a good conference. Uh, obviously, Kansas State's a good team. The Big 12 is a good conference. So anytime you go against a Big 12, you know, a Big 12 team, it's, it's great for us. Um, you know, we, like you said, we've been here in Memphis a few times. We've had a really good football team here, too. And, um, it's, it's, it's gonna, we know it's going to be a tough game, but this is a, it's a great honor for us to play these guys. Yeah, we are almost 25 minutes in the press conference. Nobody's asked about your defense, so I will. But how good is this group compared to some of the other teams you've had? As you said, you won a lot of games, been to a lot of bowls. <coughs> Brian Newberry's as good a football coach as I've ever been around. And not just coaches I've coached with, you know, we've gone against a lot of great defense coordinators throughout my 30 years of coaching. He's as innovative and as creative as I've ever been around. And um, what some of the improvements we've had on defense, maybe they've happened, but I haven't seen too many where, I mean, we've improved 90 spots. I mean, we're in triple digits in some spots, and we've moved into the top 30. And so what he's done uh, has been remarkable. And you consider in college, it's not like the league. It's not like we went out and got free agents. And you know, I know there's the transfer report and all that stuff, but that doesn't happen too often at the Naval Academy. But uh, what our defense has done has been amazing. Uh, playing against our two service academies, the, what he's done from a rushing standpoint and our defense has done and holding, you know, Air Force and Army to those rushing numbers. Like I said, I've played them a lot. And what we did against them was great tribute to our defense and our defense is, our defense has taken us to another level. Uh, the success that we've had this year, you know, obviously, like you said, we talked about Malcolm a lot, but a big, big part of the success has been our defense. Um, he's as good a nose guard as I've had since I've been here. You know, to be a 300-pounder, uh, to move the way he does. He's also a smart football player. His dad, you know, is a, is a high school football coach, played college football. And so he has a great football IQ. Um, but he's, his, you know, probably the best nose guard, one of the best, you know, top two guys since I've been here. You made anything else for two years, so good. Talk about kind of one player. Who else stands out on the defense and made big step, steps this year and makes a big difference from being as good as you are on defense? Well, I think Diego Fogo, you know, our middle linebackers, uh, you know, he's one of our more highly recruited kids. We don't get too many kids that I mean, he had over 20 offers. We thought he was going to go to Central Florida. Uh, fortunate that he came to the Naval Academy. But he's, just, you know, we don't get too many guys that are 245 pounds, 6'3", that can run like him. And he's a smart football player. Um, Jacob Springer has had a great year. Um, Nazir Cromarty, our other outside rush in, has been tremendous. Um, our secondaries played well. You know, with our, our two safeties, uh, Evan Falkman, Kevin Brennan, and our corners, Mikey McMorris and Cameron Kenley, a Memphis kid. Um, been proud of all those guys. but. We've, you know, for the most part, have stayed, health, stayed healthy this, this season. And, then, you know, when you play well on defense like that, it's normally a contribution. You know, I mentioned a lot of guys, but that's normally when it happens. 
There are a lot of guys contributing. Well, obviously at home we have our, you know, we have our traditional um, blue on gold at home, and we wear obviously some form of white when we go on the road. Um, you know, there'll be some teams that have they don't want any saying in, but sometimes you'll have some captains, some seniors, coach. Can we wear this at home? So some of that, you know, is in, involved. Uh, some of the specialty uniforms that we had in the Army Navy game have, you know, been predominantly our uh, Under Armour, our athletic director, and, and uh, Greg Morgan Thaler, our equipment um, athletic director. So all of those guys together have come up with it. I stay out of that. You know what I mean? It's like, just just show us what time. We will. Oh, those are nice. You know, yeah, we'll wear that. You know, just, um, I, just I, I try to make sure that we're prepared. Um, but Under Armour, a, a lot of it is Under Armour does a great job uh, in creating things for us. Um, at first, I t we took some flack from uh, some alumni when we were changing things up, you know, because they wanted to, us to have the traditional stuff. And, and so there, I, I've, I've tried to appease both sides because, yes, for the alumni, they want tradition, but the current players want a little swag. And so you got you to, gotta, I don't want to be disrespectful to the, the, the classes that have passed on, but I also got to make sure our current players are happy. So you try to appease both sides. And so... We'll do our, some of our traditional stuff, but we're always going to have we're always going to have a little bit of bling in our in what we do.